We've been studying, and you, you have been reading reasons behind the age of, of explorations. The age of exploration took place between the 15th century and the 17th century. And as we said before, there were, there were several motivational factors. In the first video, as you saw, was um, trade, trade routes to Asia for spices and goods. Discovery, personal discovery, and that fame. And then also personal wealth for both you and, or for the explorer and for the country. Well, now, as, as exploration gets a little bit bigger and, and more popular, and the, the leaders of the countries find it necessary to have more land, it, the motivational factors turn into three different things. One is God. The spread of religion was always a major thing because they believed that their religion should have a huge impact on everybody else. And then two, gold, which is wealth both for personal and for country. The explorers got money from the royalty who were funding the, funding the expedition and the country, of course, gained more land, which brought in more, more money because of the resources um, both raw materials and materials that were being made by other civilizations or being grown by other civilizations on that land. So that could bring in more money and easily go along the trade routes. And then you had glory, which is finding the trade routes, having that fame of defying all odds and bringing in the new trade routes and also finding the land that the country has now just expanded to and taken over. Um, the expansion of the, of the countries was extremely important for, for each of the countries involved in the age of exploration because the more land you had, the more money you had, the more power you had. And as we go on through the, the study of the age of exploration and as we see other things, that took place, we will no you will begin to notice the advantages and the disadvantages of the age of exploration and what came about. Now with this, the exploration opened up a, c a country's movement of people, goods between the two continents. All the trade routes opened up more um, communication. It, it, took on a whole new deal of bringing in goods, people, money, ideas, everything, you name it. it. With the trade routes opening up, it brought forth everything. The ideas based on your re religious ideas and political ideas. And then you have people. So things such as colon or colonizing, excuse me, um, colonialism, which means people from one country moving to another country to um, be, take that land for, for their country. Um, and they would start settlements. So places like Jamestown, um, here in, in North Carolina, we have the Lost Colony. These people came over from Great Britain to Jamestown and to the Lost Colony, uh, Roanoke area, to start new lives for their own countries. Some people, such as the Pilgrims and the Quakers, came over for, from and to save themselves from religious persecutions and start a new life in the, in the new world. Other people, such as, as slaves, were unfortunate victims of human human slave trafficking that would bring them over to the new worlds as captives, unfortunately, and that is one thing that we will be talking more about. And as we get there, we will see the atrocities that took place. But with all in all, all of it came about, and all of it, what had begun and started with this particular um, age of discovery or age of exploration. 
The Columbian Exchange was a movement of people and goods between Europe and the Americas and Africa. And who was it named after but well-known Christopher Columbus. Now this Columbian Exchange was actually a triangular route. Um, and what it looked like was this. Here is, is my little makeshift of, of the world. But you have North America, Europe, and this is Africa. Hang on one second. I didn't do this yet, but here's Africa. And goods, goods were brought from the New World to, to the Old World, and from the Old World to the New World. As you can see, this arrow here takes it from the New World to the Old World, which is spices, crops, and, and other types of food. From the Old World to the New World, you have colonists. You have animals, slaves, and of course diseases. Because what people don't realize, especially with the diseases, is each area, each area's environment, everyone is used to it, that your body is not affected by it as some other areas. So when Europeans would come over to the, to the New World and not used to their environment, they were easily prone to catching diseases that the New World offered offered them, but it was the same for the natives of the New World who were catching diseases from the people of the, of the Old World or the, the explorers of the Old World. So it was a very iffy time, especially when it came down to diseases. But the exchange happened between the Old World and the New World. For the New World, you had spices and crops such as corn, beans, potatoes, cocoa beans, and tobacco. Then you also had precious metals such as gold and silver. In the old world, you had wheat, sugar, rice, and coffee that were our crops. And then you had animals such as horses, cows, and pigs. And of course disease, again, as smallpox and malaria, and people from the old world, colonists and slaves. Now, this transition was seen as the Columbian Exchange, it was seen as the triangular trade routes, it was seen as many different things. You'll, in um, other, other areas you'll hear it as the Middle Passage. But that's because the route went back and forth from Europe to Americas to Africa. So you had this triangular route from here to here to here. And sometimes it would even go from here down to South America and back up to here. So you see where that triangular trade route idea came from. And this was very important because many things, just like diseases like we just talked about, many things had never been seen before in the old world that were found in, in the new world. Could you imagine not having dinner without potatoes one night? Oh my gosh, please. Or corn or green beans. None of that was in the old world until the new worlds were discovered. And once they were discovered and all of this was brought about, then you had more of an idea. The same with the old worlds. New worlds, they didn't see many horses, cows, or pigs, but they were in the old world. But then once they could move to the new world, they took these with them. So you see the exchange between the old world and the new world. The old world is went to the New World, and the New World went back to the Old World, and that was because the trade routes were opening up. Now, with the age of exploration, you do have vocabulary. <laughs> and you are going to need to know these vocabularies, the, this voca these vocabulary terms, excuse me, um, for your test, so make sure that you do put these into your notes. Um, your first word is circumnavigate, and circumnavigate means to sail the sail completely around the world. And then you have a caravel, which is a small, fast sailing ship used by the Spanish and Portuguese explorers. The Colombian Exchange, which is an exchange of plants, animals, pe people, and spices and crops between the New World and the Old World. Conquistador. Conquistador is a Spanish conqueror soldier in the New World searching for the three G's, God, Gold, and Glory. And then you have sextant. 
which is a navigational instrument for measuring the angle between the horizon and the sun or the stars to find the ship's directional location. Basically, what this was doing was helping them on the ships to find the latitude and longitude because at this time, this was their navigational technology. They didn't have anything about the GPS, although this was your very first form of a GPS. And then, of course, skepticism. Now, why did I put skepticism in here? Because all of this was very skeptical for the people, excuse me, that lived during this age. Skepticism is having doubt or uncertainty of an idea or a theory. Now, the idea that the world was round, that people didn't believe that. And they didn't believe it because how could the world be round when everything was always so flat? And when you, when you stand on a beach and you look out at the horizon, it almost looks as though you're going to fall off the side of the earth. That if you go out too far out there, it's just going to drop. Which, in reality, we now know today that that's not necessarily the case. However, that was the case back then, or that's what they believed that was the case back then. So they had a heavy dose of skepticism <laughs> with that. Um, Christopher Columbus is your next one. With He was an Italian explorer who sailed for Spain to find new routes to India. But where did he land? He founded Central America instead. But again, he didn't know that for several years to come. And then Ferdinand Magellan. 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 Ferdinand Magellan was a Portuguese explorer who was the first to circumnavigate the world. Get these down in your notes, and I will check them on Friday. Have a good day.